Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is part 26 of Tafsir al-Sa'di. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Qad nara taqalluba wajhika fi s-samai falanuwalliyannaka qibalatan tardaha. Fawalli wajhaka shatr al-masjid al-haram. Wa haythu ma kuntum fawallu wujuhakum shatra. Wa inna al-lazina utu al-kitab la ya'lamuna annahu al-haqq min rabbihim. وَمَا اللَّهُ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا يَعْمَلُونَ We see the turning of your face for guidance towards heaven. Now we will turn you to a qibla, a direction in prayer, that will please you. So turn your face in the direction of the sacred mosque. And wherever you are, turn your faces in its direction. Those who were given the scripture know well that that, that is the truth. From their Lord. Those who were given the scripture know well that that is the truth from their Lord, and Allah is not unaware of what they do. Allah says to His Prophet, وسلم, We see the turning of your face for guidance towards heaven. That is, we see you frequently turning your face in all directions longing and waiting for revelation with instructions to turn towards the Kaaba. It mentions your face and not your gaze to convey a sense of great eagerness and because turning of the face implies turning of the gaze. Now we will turn you, that is, we will direct you. Now we will turn you, that is, we will direct you as you are under our protection. Qiblatan tardaha To a qibla that will please you, that is, that you will love, namely the Kaaba. This is indicative of the virtue and high status of the Prophet wasallam. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hastened to please him, then he told him in clear terms to face towards it. Fawalli wajhaka shatar al-masjid al-haram So turn your face in the direction of the sacred mosque. The word translated here as face refers to the front of the body. Wherever you are, on land or sea, east or west, north or south, land or sea, east or west, north or south, turn your faces in its direction, that is, towards it. This, highlight, this highlights the fact that facing the Kaaba is a condition of validity for all prayers, obligatory and supererogatory. And that if it is possible to face it directly, then one must do so. Otherwise, facing its general direction is sufficient. Turning away from it whilst praying invalidates the prayer because the command to do a thing is a prohibition of its opposite. Because the command to do a thing is a prohibition of its opposite. As Allah mentioned above, the people of the book and others objecting to that and referred, and referred to their argument here, he states that the people of knowledge among them know that you are following the truth and the command of your Lord in that regard because they find in their scripture, because they find this in their scripture. Therefore, their objection stems from stubbornness and wrongdoing because they know that they are in the wrong. So do not concern yourself with that. For a person would only worry about someone objecting to him if the matter in question was ambiguous or unclear. And it is possible that the objection may be valid, which is not applicable in this case, however. The person would only worry about someone objecting to him if the matter in question was ambiguous or unclear, and it is possible that the objection may be valid, which is not applicable in this case, however. But when one is certain that the one who is being subjected to objections is in the right, and the motive of the one who raised the objection is stubbornness, and he is aware that he is in the wrong, then there is no reason to be concerned. Rather, you may expect punishment to befall the one who is objecting in this world and in the hereafter. Hence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and Allah is not unaware of what they do. Rather, he is recording their deeds and requite them 
for them. This is a warning to those who object, and it offers consolation to the believers. Even if you were to bring to those who were given the scripture every kind of sign, they would not follow your qibla, nor would you follow their qibla, nor indeed would they follow one another's qibla. If you were to follow their desires after the, after the knowledge that has come to you, if you were to follow their desires after the knowledge that has come to you, then you would surely be in the wrong. Because the Prophet ﷺ was so eager for people to be guided, he would do this. Because the Prophet ﷺ was so eager for the people to be guided, he would do his utmost to offer sincere advice, speaking to them in a gentle manner to show them the path of guidance, and he would be distressed if they did not follow the command of Allah. Among the disbelievers were some who rebelled against the command of Allah and opposed the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they rejected guidance deliberately out of stubbornness. Such people included the Jews and Christians, the people of the first book who disbelieved in Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, despite having certain knowledge, despite having certain knowledge that he was a true prophet. Their disbelief did not stem from ignorance. Hence, Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala told him Wala in atayta alladhina utu alkitaba bi kulli ayatin ma tabi'u qiblatak even if you were to bring to those who were given the scripture every kind of sign that is every kind of proof and evidence to support what you say and explain what you are calling them to ma tabi'u qiblatak they would not follow your qibla that is they would not follow you because following this qibla is indicative of following him this is mentioned because the reason for the argument was the issue of the Qibla. They adopted this stance because they were stubborn. They knew the truth, but they turned away from it. Signs are only of benefit to one who is seeking the truth, but is somewhat confused. Signs are only of benefit to one who is seeking the truth, but is somewhat confused. In which case, clear signs may explain the matter to him. As for the one who has decided not to follow the truth, there is no hope for him. Moreover, there were, they, they, there were already some differences. Moreover, there were already some differences among them, as some of them did not follow the Qibla of others. So there is nothing strange in them not following your Qibla, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When they are enemies filled with real envy. Nor would you follow their Qibla. This is more eloquent than saying, do not follow their qibla, because that implies that it is natural for the Prophet Sallallahu to be different from them. Hence, it is impossible for him to do that. Similarly, as the truth had become clear on the basis of certain evidence, there was no need to bring in, there was no need to bring an answer to their specious argument, because there is no end to such arguments, and because it is easy to see that they are that they are flawed and because it is easy to see that they are flawed, as it is known that everything that is contrary, that is contrary to the clear truth is false. As it is known that everything that is contrary to clear truth is false. Therefore, discussion of their specious argument is not necessary. If you were to follow their desires, the verse mentions their desires and not their religion because what they are following is mere whims and desires, even though deep in their hearts they know that it is not a religion. The one who forsakes religion will inevitably follow whims and desires. The one who forsakes religion will inevitably follow whims and desires. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, have you seen the one who takes his own whims and desires as his God? End quote. Surah Al-Furqan, Quran, chapter 25, verse 43. Min ba'di ma after the knowledge has come to you. After the knowledge has come to you, 
that what you are following is truth and what they are following is falsehood. Then you would, if you did follow them, surely be in the wrong. You'd be one of the wrongdoers. And what wrongdoing can be greater, and what what and what wrongdoing can be greater than the wrongdoing of one who knows what is true and false, but gives precedence to falsehood over truth. Although this is addressed, although this is addressed to the Prophet وسلم, it also includes his ummah. Moreover, if this is the case with regard to the Prophet وسلم, were he to do, if this is the case with regard to the Prophet وسلم, were he to do that, and he is far above becoming a wrongdoer, as he is so elevated in status and did so many good deeds, then anyone else would be more deserving of being called a wrongdoer. الَّذِينَ آتَيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابَ يَعْرِفُونَهُ كَمَا يَعْرِفُونَ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ وَإِنَّ فَرِيقًا مِّنْهُمْ لَيَكْتُمُونَ الْحَقَّ وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ Those to whom we gave the scripture know him, i.e. the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu as they know their own sons, but some of them conceal the truth knowingly. الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكَ فَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْمُمْتَرِينَ It is truth from your Lord, so do not be among those who doubt. Here Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala tells us, that it is well established among the people of the book. And they knew that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the messenger of Allah and that what he brought was the truth. They were as certain of that as they were certain of their own sons who they would not confuse with anyone else's. Their knowledge of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was of such a level that there could be no doubt or confusion about it at all. But some of them in fact, the majority of them who disbelieved in him concealed this testimony knowingly, despite their certainty, despite that certainty. And who does greater wrong than those who conceal a testimony they have received from Allah? Quran chapter 2, verse 140. This provided consolation to the Prophet وسلم, and believers and warned them about the evil and specious arguments of these people. But some of them did not knowingly conceal the truth. Some of them believed in him, and some disbelieved in him out of ignorance. The one who has knowledge is obliged to disclose the truth, explain it, and make it attractive to people with whatever means he can of eloquence, proof, examples, and so on. He must also show falsehood to be false, distinguish it from the truth, and make it look displeasing and unattractive with whatever means he can. Those who concealed the truth did the opposite of what they were commanded to do, which had a negative impact on their character and attitude. Al-Haqqum al rabbik It is truth from your Lord. That is, this is the truth which is more deserving of being called truth than anything else because of what it contains of sublime aims, good instructions, purification of the soul, and motivation to focus on what is in the, its best interests and focus and motivation to focus on what is in its best interests and ward of that which may harm it because it comes from your lord he has sent down to you the quran in which there is nourishment for minds and souls and guidance to that which is in their best interests so do not be among those who doubt that is you should not have the slightest doubt about it. Rather, you should think about it and ponder its meanings until you reach certainty thereby, because pondering it will, inevit will inevitably ward off doubt and bring certainty. Each community has its own direction to which it turns so hasten to do good deeds wherever you are allah will bring you all together for allah has power over all things that is the people of each religion the people of each religion have a direction towards which they face in worship it is not the issue of facing towards a particular direction because 
That is one of the laws that may change with time and circumstance. It is subject to abrogation or to change from one direction to another. Rather, rather what matters is obeying Allah and seeking to draw closer to Him. This is a sign of blessing and piety. If one does not acquire it, he will be he will be loser in this world and in the hereafter. But if he acquires it, he will be a winner in the true sense of the word. This is something that is agreed upon in all religions, and it is the purpose for which and it is the purpose for which Allah created the universe and enjoined it upon them. The command to hasten to do good deeds implies more than a command to do good deeds. For hastening to do good deeds implies doing them in the best possible manner and racing to do that. The one who takes this initiative in this world will be the first to attain paradise in the hereafter, and those who are foremost in the race will be the highest in status. Good deeds include good deeds include all obligatory duties such as prayer, fasting, zakah, hajj, umrah, jihad, and helping others and yourself. As one of the greatest motivations for hastening to do good deeds is the reward that Allah has connected to such deeds. He says, wherever you are, Allah will bring you all together for Allah has power over all things. He will bring you all together on the day of resurrection by his might and power. Then he will requite each individual for what he did. So he will requite those who do evil for their deeds and he will, re and he will reward those who do good with the best reward. End quote. Surah Al-Najm, Quran, chapter 53, verse, th verse 31. This verse is quoted as evidence for doing all kinds of good deeds, such as offering prayer when the time, of it uh, when the time for it begins, hastening to do what is required of fasting, hajj, umrah, and praying, and paying zakah, offering sunnah, acts of worship, and so on. How comprehensive and beneficial this verse is. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.